Hey folks, this is Vince with Ads Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to look at Karatea. At least that's how I think you pronounce it. It's for one to six players, ages eight and up, and the average play time is 30 minutes. Brought to you by Mage Company. I was told that the game will be launching on Kickstarter mid-August of 2016, and normally I would do a preview for something like that, but I was told that my copy here is representative of the final product, so I'm going to be doing a review as opposed to a preview. As far as what this game is all about, it's a cooperative game. Players are going to be trying to, over the course of three rounds, to collect as many carrots as possible. And the number of carrots you have to collect depends on how many people are playing the game. I think in one to three players it's 20, and in four to six I think it's 25 or something like that. But uh, the game is played over three rounds, so you've got three different quest decks. Quest one is for round one, quest two is for round two, quest three is for round three. You've got sand timers for each 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 90 seconds. And the reason why it goes up like that is because on the first round, of the first quest, it starts off with a 3x3 three three grid. And then uh, in the second quest, in the second round, there's a 4x4 four four grid. And then in the fifth round, you have a 5x5 five five grid. So you're going to have to you know, make the grid larger as you play. Now, before we get started, it's worth noting that this manual here is terrible. I'm sorry. Um, I mean, normally if this was a prototype copy, I'd say, hey, I could accept these things. But uh, if this is a true and final copy of the game, then they've blundered big time here with this thing. It's just so, so... Everything's a mess. Let's just put it that way. For example, round overview. Round one. Before the first phase, each player gets a specific amount of tiles depending on the number of players and place them face down in front of them. Okay, I get that part. And then it shows that. However, it goes into repeating that. Before the first phase, for this is round two now, uh, before the first phase, each player gets a specific amount of tiles depending on the number of players and place them face down in front of them. Okay, uh, so it repeats itself, but not only that, but where's the graph? Oh, wait, it's down here. There's a mix-up of information, uh, like this paragraph says, if there is more than one bird on the map, then you use their equivalent dice. After each player's turn, the birds roll the equivalent dice and fly around affecting the game as follows. Well, as follows, there usually means that there's some sort of chart or explanation following that, but this just says when you start a new round. It doesn't say what happens, it just says as follows. But yet, over here on the right-hand side, there's um, directions as to how the birds operate. So it's like, this should be down here, and uh, this should be uh, below this, and it's just, everything just doesn't, I don't know, it just... I had to reread this manual like four or five times to get the gist of the general rules so I can understand it. So I think whoever is doing the, the uh, Q&A testing for this manual may want to revisit this because it's, it's a mess. Uh, but anyway, the back of the manual does go over the characters. Each player gets a special character card with a special ability on it. You can use it once per round. And there are birds that uh, spawn each round and they either hinder you or help you. In most cases, they hinder you either by landing on a carrot or by landing on you. It depends on the bird and, you know. But anyway, so uh, the way that this works is at the beginning of the game, each player gets so many labyrinth cards based on how many people are playing the game. Um, you're going to go ahead and each player gets one character card. You're going to shuffle the bird tokens up, and they're going to go ahead and flip the first quest card and uh, take a look at it. Now, this is a 3x3 three three grid, and your goal is to try and get a path from the entrance point to the exit point within a certain number of moves. In the first round, it's 10 moves. This is a bird token. This is a carrot. These are three carrot tokens, and this is a one carrot tokens. Just to show you what that's like, there's some tokens in the box here that I didn't show you. So uh, that's, what, that's what we're aiming to build right now between the two of us. So this, this sand timer would flip, and then collectively, we're not taking turns or anything, but collectively we're doing something like this. We're putting tiles down. My friend might do something like, uh, I don't know, this, um, and then I might look at mine and go, hmm, well, I, let's go ahead and put maybe this down here like that. And if you want to replace a tile, you can. Like, let's say I didn't want this one here or whatever. Uh, let's say I, I could put this here and take this tile back and put it into my hand. I could do that, but I'm not going to do that. I kind of want to save that. And then I might want to put this, say, down here. And then I could do something like, I don't know, this. All right. And then something like... And again, the sand timer is ticking down while this is happening. Uh, now, land has to connect with land and grass has to connect with grass. It's another stipulation here. Um, so maybe something like that. Um, and finally, maybe, no, oh, can't do that, something like that, and something like that, and something like that. Okay, there we go. Now, if you make a mistake, um, 
like you're, you're gonna have an extra tile at the end of this. But if you make a mistake here, uh, like the sand tiver runs out and land doesn't connect to land and grass doesn't connect to grass, or um, you didn't create a path from the uh, entrance point to the exit point, which is this and this, um, then you get a penalty. Basically, there are birds, like I said, and uh, you're gonna go ahead and spawn a bird based on what this says here, but an extra bird is spawned if you mess up and have to rearrange things. You uh, can, it's one bird per three rearrangements or three tile rearrangements. So if I had messed up somewhere, I would have to uh, put another bird token somewhere on the field here, um, and then I'd get three tile rearrangements to fix things. But uh, let's just go ahead and populate the rest of this here. There's Three carat token there, there's a three carat token there, one and two, okay, one and one. Okay, so we're good to go for the first round. And the uh, rabbit starts here. Now, the manual doesn't say if it starts on the token itself or on the tile. I'm going to assume it's the tile and just have it at that. And then basically what you're trying to do is get as many carrots as possible um, before your ten moves is up. If your ten moves is up and you don't get to the exit, then you lose all the carrots that you've picked up along the way. You're going to go ahead and flip the bird token to see what it is. In this case, it's an owl. And the owls operate, um, let's see here, uh, when it lands on um, a carrot, turns a three carat token into a one carat token, so that's nasty. And then um, if it lands on you, it reactivates your character's effect, which is a, a positive, actually. So that's pretty good. So uh, each player is going to take turns, uh, and the card does say what order it goes in. Uh, this is a clockwise direction here, so players play clockwise order. In a two-player game, I guess it really doesn't matter, solo, it really doesn't matter. But anyway, uh, so let's go ahead and do the first move. I'm going to go ahead and do something like that, and that's my one move. I'm going to go ahead and pick this up. And I might activate my special ability. Each time you collect a carrot token, you count plus one carrot. So I'm going to go ahead and flip that over to the side like that, showing that I use that ability for this. Okay. And then I roll this die. Uh, there's a each bird is colored differently. Like there's red and uh, white and different things like that. But I'm going to go ahead and roll this. Now this die has different directional arrows showing you where it'll fly. Um, the carrot symbol means it'll land on the. Uh, I think it's the closest carrot. And then the uh, the rabbit symbol means that it lands on you, and then the directions just simply say what direction it goes in. So let's say I rolled this, and the owl went this way. Okay, I'm just, this is for example purposes, mind you. And then my friend might go, okay, we really want this one up here. So he's going to go this way, let's move to the owl goes. Um, he, we roll the die, and it moves back this way. It reactivates his special ability. Actually, um, that was my turn. Because this, yeah, so this reactivated my special ability for landing on me, which was awesome. So now I've got that, and again, this is just for example purposes. So I could do four, five, and then six, seven, eight, and and hopefully be up before ten moves. So my friend might go up this way. He rolls the die. The owl moves. Uh, do that. Pick that up. This goes into that. Um, now the uh, clown special ability, which is what he has, send a bird to the entry point. So I could, he could play something like that just to get the owl out of the way. And then again, we'll be collectively taking turns, uh, moving the rabbit and rolling the die for the bird and moving it around. And eventually we'll get to this spot. And uh, let's just say that we're done. We've we spent all of our moves, and you know we don't want to push our luck anymore, and and we're done. So all we have to do is go to the exit point, and that's it. That ends that round. Now the manual does not say whether or not you're supposed to clear off the uh, existing labyrinth tiles. I'm going to assume not, because every round each player gets the same number of tiles as they did in round one. So two players get five tiles in round two, and then in th round three each player gets five more tiles. If you were to clear this entire thing off. Uh, 5 plus 6 is 11, and that is not enough for a 4x4 grid at 16. So I'm going to assume that these tiles stay here, which makes it important that the entrance and the exit point, or at least the, e the exit point, has a path that will lead um, into, uh, into you know, a, a future tile that uh, will be placed here at some point in the future, because we're going to try and expand this into a 4x4 grid. So that's basically it. Uh, again, uh, once that round is over, we'll go ahead and collect more of these labyrinth uh, Tiles, one, two, three, four, five from me, and then one, two, three, four, five from my friend here, and our abilities get uh, reflipped over. And uh, we have to also track the fact that um, I used my ability, let's say, twice or whatever. So I might want to turn this one into a three just to show that I got extra carrots using my ability. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And again, um, that, that, that starts quest two. So we're going to go ahead and flip quest two over. Actually, this goes away. This spur token. All the tokens get removed. And then we're going to flip a new quest card. And this is what that's going to look like. Um, so, oh, yeah, it goes like this. So um, we've got the entry point up here. 
uh, like so. Now, the manual does not go over, you know, if you need a path, like, like this shows that the rabbit is coming in from the third tile. So it would be somewhere up here. But it doesn't say whether or not you actually need a path coming off of the board. It doesn't say that, so I'm going to assume that's okay. Um, but it needs to come out this side over here. So I may, we, we may have to adjust the maze in some way to allow for a path to maybe flow off the board this way. Again, I don't know if we need a path going off the board. I only did it down here because I thought maybe the exit point would be down here somewhere in the future. So we would be building off of this. But in this case, we're actually building this way. So we, in the second round or second quest, we may have to replace a tile from our hand and replace this with maybe one of these four tiles just so we can start building to the left, possibly. So as long as it conforms to a 4x4 four four grid and there's an entry and exit point. Then once we build that uh, within that time limit here, uh, let's just maybe do that real quick just to show you. Um, let's say that, uh, oh, here's a good one. So my friend is going to take this back in his hand, replace this with this, um, and then we're going to put this back in our hand, replace this with this. Okay, that way we have a little bit more maneuverability. Um, and then I might do something like, okay, again, we're trying to, uh, now there would be, we would need something over here. So maybe something like this, and then we would need to fix this tile. So I don't have, okay, actually this would work. So I'm going to take this back into my hand, put this one here like so, and then maybe do something like that, and then do something like that. Okay, and then we need stuff down here. Okay, so let's do, uh, this goes off as well. Um, again, I'm just thinking out loud. That one there, this one here. Actually, we don't want to do that. Let's do something like this. And maybe we'll do a, is there a four? I don't see a 4-1. Uh, no, okay. So yeah, we're basically just trying to finish this maze as best we can. Maybe something like this, and then something like this. Again, uh, I don't know if we need an exit point pointing off of the board, um, because the exit point technically is now over here. So uh, now we have our 4x4 four four grid. Let's just say that we managed to do this before the time limit expired. We did not break any uh, placement rules, so we don't have to add an extra bird to the round um, as a penalty to move anything else around. But this is what we ended up with for the second quest. And now with this card, we're going to go ahead and populate the birds. We're going to populate the carrots. There's two birds now. There's more carrots. And again, we're going to be trying to collectively get through this in a certain number of turns. And at the end of quest three or round three, we're going to try and get um, the amount of carrots that would allow us to win the game. Again, one to three players is 20 carrots. We're already at nine, so we're, we're doing pretty well here. And that is the gist of Carrot Tia. Um, it's an excellent cooperative game, I think. I, I do like it. However, the rule book definitely needs some work. Uh, again, it's just, it's all over the place. It repeats itself unnecessarily. Like, it should, there should just be one section that says, for all three rounds, this is how many tiles each player gets. Because it's the same information repeated three times uh, over the, the, the three rounds. Like, it breaks it up. It tells you what it does in each of the three rounds. Uh, round one, round two, and round three. But there's also bird movement in the middle of round two uh, when it could just be explained in a separate area. Like, it, nothing is organized here. So the manual needs some work. Um, I would appreciate a box insert that would be nice uh, to hold maybe these little tokens and these uh, labyrinth cards and stuff like that. The game does come with some baggies, uh, so that's nice. Um, but yeah, overall, it's, it's not a bad game. It's a pretty cool cooperative game. But the rules, man, I just... Uh, <laughs> I mean, um, again, I was told that this is a representation of the final product. So um, let's just hope that before the actual final print, uh, they can do something about that rule book. So that was uh, Kara TLA, ladies and gentlemen. Again, this will be launching on Kickstarter sometime in August of 2016. If you haven't already, subscribed to my YouTube channel and check out my official website, www.dadsgamingaddiction.com. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.